In this lesson, I will talk about host intrusion detection systems and host intrusion prevention systems. Host intrusion detection systems should be used to monitor your overall system architecture. Um, the reason that we're going to do this is because we can't look at the entire network all the time, and the entire network does not show us uh, everything that is going on. For example, if somebody logs into a computer and tries to use a local password uh, five different times and gets locked out of the computer, well, that is something that the network intrusion prevention system is not going to tell us. Uh, that is only going to be a function of um, a host intrusion detection or a host intrusion prevention system. So host intrusion detection or HIDS monitors hosts. So we, we have a problem if we're just, if we start jumping from system to system. Network intrusion prevention systems are great at what they do, but they can't look internally. Um, host intrusion detection systems serve several different purposes. They monitor files or directories, they monitor system activity, they monitor system logs, um, and also report on patterns that they may see as malicious. Now, not all software is going to do that. So let's talk about two of these specifically. The first one is going to be AID. AID stands for Advanced Intrusion Detection Engine, uh, which is used for uh, integrity checking. It's only used for integrity checking. So when a help desk or when a lab is built and we have what we call a gold image, it means the standard image that we're going to deploy out, what it'll do is make a hash database of all the files and all the processes on that system. In order to see if any of the main system uh, files have been compromised, we may run manually uh, aid and check the gold image versus the uh, the image that's running. The problem with that is it's a very manual process. It's not a uh, scheduled task. I guess you can make it a scheduled task, but it would be more trouble than it's worth because there's other tools out there, such as OSEC. Uh, OSEC stands for Open Source Intrusion Detection System. Um, actually, it doesn't stand for that. The second one is OSEC. Um, OSEC is used for um, many different systems and not just Linux, which AID is designed for. Um, OSEC can be put on uh, Windows, it could be put on Mac, and it could be put on Linux. It's a very powerful host intrusion detection system. It runs on Linux, but like I said, you can use it on other systems, and that's what we do here at the university. Uh, logs from OSEC are hashed so they can't be tampered with. This is important because attackers generally modify um, log files to uh, make sure that they cover their tracks. OSEC has four basic components, file integrity checking, um, aid only runs on a manual basis. Um, OSEC does it every few hours. Uh, log monitoring, um, OSEC can report the logs to a central server, which we'll look at here in a second. A rootkit detection, um, OSEC agents check for rootkits on a system every two hours. That's something that aid cannot do. And then active response. So responses are configurable. Let's say that uh, you logged in with a, or tried to log in with a local password five different times. It could lock you out even though you may not have a policy on your Windows domain to do that. There are some advantages and some disadvantages of using host intrusion detection. Um, the first one is going to be uh, host intrusion detection is a simple way of ensuring integrity remains intact. And it's going to look at the system as a whole, the system entirely. 
Um, it's relatively easy administration and it meets compliance standards for uh, some industries such as uh, payment card industry systems. Uh, we use this extensively in our um, PCI network here at the university. Some dis disadvantages of using host intrusion detection. Um, well, installation and setup can be very cumbersome in the beginning, but once it's done, it's, um, it just runs. Um, files are changed frequently, so you get a huge amount of alerts. Um, let's say that uh, System 32 uh, in Windows is changed because of an update that Microsoft puts out. Well, that will... Uh, alert OSEC that something is happening. Now you can configure um, OSEC and um, some of the other ones like Tripwire uh, is another, uh, but that's a commercial version uh, HIDS piece of software, but you can configure them to only look at certain directories if you want to. But it is very chatty, so I get probably uh, we may only have OSEC on uh, 30 different systems. However, I get several hundred emails a day from, uh, from the system about what's going on with, with the overall uh, PCI network, which is a good thing uh, if we're looking at security. Let's go to Splunk here, and let's look at... Let's look at OSEC. So I just happened to uh, type in OSEC, not host equals Potemkin, because that's one of our other servers that has OSEC on it. And I'm looking for anything that has the word password in it. So what it's doing is it's going through, let's, let's pick on one here, okay? Let's pick on this one right here. So on July 21st, which was, um, uh, two days ago on Friday, uh, says alert level tool rule uh, 1002 fired, unknown problem somewhere in the system. Okay, looks at uh, var log secure, and it said, um, looks like there was a PAM module error, uh, wrong password. Okay, which is a good thing to understand. Okay, here's another one. This is one of our older systems uh, for um, our bookstore, and it's actually being decommissioned. So there was an alert level five. The higher the rule level, the worse off uh, the damage could be. Uh, here's the rule number, and it says Windows error event location, um, no domain, uh, user, uh, password change required. So it's going to give you a lot more information from the system than just looking at certain logs. In conclusion, host intrusion detection systems should be used to ensure that your hosts are in good security status. OSEC is a great piece of software because it is open source and it's easy to